Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you our project that we front end team have been working on at AppScode. This is uh, the our we like to call it the cluster UI. This is basically a Kubernetes dashboard that lets you uh, manage the Kubernetes resources of your cluster. So at first, uh, this page uh, here, you are seeing uh, uh, the list of clusters that you have uh, imported. So uh, you can import new clusters or uh, remove the existing clusters. So if I go here, you can see that there is a, uh, there are two options. You can view the, the clusters cube config. You can download the cube config or copy it from here or uh, you can also remove the cluster completely. So let's, uh, uh, I'm going to show you how to import a cluster. So at first let's remove it. Uh, so <clears throat> you can see the cluster is uh, removed from my list. So let's uh, at first import a cluster. Uh, so at first you have to choose the provider from these uh, five options, or you can also opt to uh, import the cluster manually. If you choose the manual import, you have to provide uh, you have to provide the inputs manually, like the provider and also the cube config. Uh, I'm going to uh, select Linode here and click next. So next we see here the credentials of the uh, uh, of uh, the Linode uh, cloud provider that I have created. So uh, this credential contains the token the, which I have got from the uh, Linode dashboard. So if I select the credential, uh, next I will be shown the list of clusters that I have in the uh, Linode provider. So uh, I'm going to select this cluster and import it. Uh, you can see here there are four clusters and uh, some related information about the clusters is also shown. So I'm going to select the kubedb demo UI cluster and import it. So now uh, our cluster is imported and it is shown in the list here. So if uh, next, uh, let's see what's in our cluster. So basically this is the cluster basic page. Uh, you can see that the basic information about the cluster is shown here, also the node list. Uh, you can see the node status from here. Uh, you also have the cube config model and the remove button. So if you look on the left sidebar, you can see that all the Kubernetes resources are shown here. We, you, you have workloads, uh, Helm charts, uh, in the data store section, you have the kubedb resources, uh, services and discovery, basically all the uh, Kubernetes resources along with your custom CRDs are shown, shown here. You can modify or edit us this sidebar, which options you want to show or which options you want to remove from the cluster settings page. So here you can drag and drop uh, items. Uh, so if you save here, the new item will be added to your sidebar. You can also uh, modify the Helm setting uh, from this settings page. So let's get back to our cluster basic page. So uh, if I click the deployments, at first you will be shown the deployments list. Uh, this is all the deployments in the uh, in our current cluster. So uh, if I click one deployment, you will be shown the deployments details like basics, container, init containers, conditions, replica sets, work. Uh, basically all the information you need will be shown, uh, all the basic information you need will be shown here. 
uh, we have some tabs uh, like backups monitoring if you want to see the backups related to this deployment the backups will be shown here like repository backup configuration uh, all the stash related resources uh, uh if you i keep monitoring you see that the service monitors and prometheus connected to this deployment uh we also have uh, a events list which will show uh, if an event occurs uh, it will be shown here uh, and uh, the resource graph is an interesting thing uh, you can basically uh, see all the resources that are connected to this particular deployment instance and if we click the uh, each of the nodes it will show the uh, target resource which is connected to this particular deployment replica sets all the replica sets that are connected to our bb deployment test is shown here horizontal I think it's uh, version, uh, the hey, version is not installed in this cluster. Okay. I think okay, uh, we'll take it offline, but yeah, something yeah. missing there. Okay. Yeah, go, keep going. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the basic concept behind this graph is the is to show you all the resources that is connected to this deployment instance. Uh, next, we have the resource definition. The YAML of the resource is shown here. You can uh, modify it and save changes. Like if I modify a, <clears throat> modify the annotations, you can also preview changes. All the basic editor functionalities are available here. It, it's basically a VS Code web version. So you can also change the <clears throat> uh, language from YAML to JSON. So yeah, that's basically the destination YAML page. So go back to the resource graph. Okay. Yeah, so like see, select secrets. So the thing important or interesting to know here is that uh, you are not just seeing the credential secrets or anything. It's like any secret that is connected to, so any secret that was mounted or used in the environment variable shows up. Uh, so, so you can see like there is that, uh, I guess the TLS starts and there is the basic, uh, there's like a bunch of different secrets here, right? So. Yeah, so I think that's kind of a, I mean, it's more than what you will see in other dashboards, right? Like if you look at all the other dashboards, the official one, Linsap or VMware Octant and all that, they all just go by owner reference, but it's, we are doing a lot more than owner reference. I think it's, uh, yeah, so, so that's that. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, basically all the, resource page are uh, basically the same. The format and the layouts are basically same. Uh, the first one is of course the resource list. If you click the, uh, one of the resource, you'll be taken to the resource details uh, and there will be some tabs uh, associated with that resource. Uh, uh, what I want to add is that uh, this is all done. Uh, we have a generic API which handles this which resources have which tabs or which tables will be shown this is all coming from uh, back uh, it is not hard coded in front end so uh, this is uh, this is uh, very dynamic uh, uh, if uh, a new resource is added something needs to be changed the front end uh, uh, we, we don't will not have to be uh, it will not have to be handled from front end it, it, it is all done from uh, back end so uh, another thing if we go to the ports uh, you can see that there are uh, two uh, extra buttons that are shown here one is for 
uh, log and on, one is for exec. So if you click log, you, you will be shown the logs for that uh, port. Uh, it's, okay. So this is the logs for the uh, BB Mongo test Mongo's one port for the MongoDB container. So you can also, uh, this is our basically terminal integration, uh, a, a, a terminal integration and you, you can also perform exec operation on uh, your desired, desired port and container. So let's select a namespace. Uh, this will show all the ports that is in that namespace. So let's select this port and uh, the container, first container will automatically selected and we have our exec terminal. So the shell is uh, sh, uh, I can change it to bash. So uh, it will be, yes, it will be shown the prompt of bash. So I can basically perform any terminal operation from <clears throat> from this window on my particular container. So you can also minimize it and continue with your daily workflow. So uh, let's show you the release pages. So if you click on releases, you will be shown the uh, releases that is uh, available in your cluster. If you click on release, it will be shown the basic information, the config, and everything related to your release, the charts. Manifest. You also have the option to roll back to this particular go version. Go to the files. Can I go, to the, go back to manifest? No. Yeah. No, sorry, the chart. Sorry, the chart. What is the chart? Yes, scroll down. Scroll down. More. Yeah. So go to the files. No, no, go to the files. The drop down for the files. Yes. Okay. So only that one. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Just wanted to confirm. Okay. Okay. Can we do this part similar to the what we have done in the deploy UI? I mean, it should be similar to a uh, a window with a sidebar where all the file will be shown and then click on the file will uh, show the details on the right side. But uh, what if the files are uh, like this? Uh, I mean, uh, the number of files are too much, then it will uh, be not uh, feasible to show them every, every one of them in the side. No, 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 make it like a file browser. Okay. We can we can make it like a file browser, right? So, I like, mean, how, how will you show all these options? Uh, you know? Similar to uh, BS Code, uh, where in the left hand side you have a project view, uh, all your files are folder here, and the right hand side you have uh, the editor view. So, clicking yeah. on a file will open in the editor. So, uh, we can do something similar here, right? Okay, so we we'll need to. Same. Talk about it. Yeah, and in that case, this thing goes top to the top. Basically, we can move it to a uh, to a, like a, another tab, just a browser or something. So then, basically, you can just start browser or something. We'll, we'll see that details in the browser. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, our uh, KeepDB managed resources. So these are all your database instances. Uh, if you click on MongoDB, you'll be shown the MongoDB ins instances that are installed in your cluster. So uh, if you click on the instance, you'll be shown the basic information, the conditions, app bindings, and the MongoDB version, stateful set, port service, and everything related to your uh, MongoDB database. Uh, uh, you have also the backups. <clears throat> repository backup configurations for your MongoDB. The security step shows you the service account, role, etc. 
uh, we have an operation tab for the database, uh, which shows the obsequies that are performed on this, that you have performed on this database instance. As you can see here, I have already performed a upgradation on the database. In the monitoring tab, you have service monitor and Prometheus connected to your database instance. Uh, the events tab shows all the events that have occurred. And the resource graph is the same as before. And the resource definition is also the same as before. So uh, we what we have done here is that we have uh, uh, made a UI to deploy your MongoDB database in the cluster. The UI looks like uh, the UI looks like this. So at first, this is the what we like to call it the options UI. Uh, the options UI you will be uh, required to put the minimum amount of information that we need to deploy your MongoDB database. So for instance, we need the name of the database. If we uh, give it a name, then you will be required to give us the namespace. Also select the version. Uh, then levels annotation, let's keep that empty. The database mode. There are three database mode, standalone, replicated, and sharded. I have selected replicated cluster and I have selected the replica now to three. Also, there is a termination policy, which I have selected wipeout, database secret. We can choose to auto generate or off secret or use existing off secret. So uh, basically, auto generate off secret, uh, we will auto generate a secret for your database. Uh, here is the machine profile <clears throat> and now at, finally you have the configuration options you can choose to configure the various as aspects of your database if you want to like topology tls initialization or if you don't don't want to uh, modify any of this you can click preview directly from here and uh, deploy your database from here so if you click preview uh, you will see that we have generated from your input an YML, uh, mongodb.yml, which will be applied if you click deploy, which will be applied, applied to your cluster and uh, the database instance will be created. So this is the uh, 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 this is straightforward approach. If you want to uh, instantly deploy your database without modifying any other aspects, this is the uh, basic configuration that we need. Basically, we, <clears throat> uh, we will take the basic input that you provided and create the database instance. So let's see what happens when we want to modify the other aspects of the database. So like before, I am going to give it a name, select a namespace, select database version, Select replicated cluster, replica number three. So I'm going to modify, let's say, topology, TLS, uh, backup, monitoring, custom config, template. So, so now uh, we'll be redirect. Uh, now, if you look at the sidebar, you will see that all the options that uh, I selected to modify are appearing in the sidebar. So at first we have topology and the topology we can uh, uh, give replica set name, replica number, storage class, storage size, etc. We can modify them from here. Uh, if I click next, we will be uh, shown the TLS configuration. So by default, that TLS configuration is disabled if you want to enable the TLS configuration. Uh, you have to give the cluster ordination mode, SSL mode, uh, API group, uh, so select a kind issuer. So uh, I think uh, the issuer list is shown from the API call. 
the class issues that you have installed in the namespace in your cluster will be shown here. So let's create a certificate. So let's go to our next yes. Uh, can you? Yeah, I think uh, her title for issuer is missing. Issuer is issuer uh, in uh, in front of a group. There should be a title called issuer. Uh, uh, API group. Above API group. Oh, oh yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, you can also create a backup or schedule a backup for your database. So let's schedule a backup. Uh, there are two options, backup in invoker. You can schedule a backup using backup invoker or backup blueprint. So if I select the backup uh, invoker, such as backup configuration, yeah, I have the option to uh, use an existing repository or create a new one. If you click the create new one, there will be a form to give information about the repository. So I have to select a backend. And let's select AWS S3. Endpoint is So this demo was previously also given by Juna, the database creation or our uh, UI build demo. Uh, uh, it was, uh, he gave the demo in the previous UI, previous version of the UI. This is our new version of the UI. Uh, in the last two months, we have uh, basically revamped our uh, UI, changed our design language. Uh, made it more compact and user friendly. So, so, yeah. Yes, so I have given the basic information about the backend. And now, using this information, uh, the repository instance, the YML for the repository instance will be automatically created. You will see. So, let's click next. Now, let's enable monitoring. Uh, let's select Prometheus operator. Add a selector. So you can also modify the port template, which is one of the most uh, complex forms that we have here one of the most nested also you can modify the port pack resources security context add environment value variables add tolerations uh, node selector terms etc so let's just keep it for now so you can choose from existing configuration or uh create new configuration let's create a new one i'm going to copy the yml required here from okay so you now when i click preview you'll be shown the list of yml's uh, that we will 
that will be automatically generated and applied when I click on the deploy button. So at first you have the MongoDB YML, then the repository YML for the backup and the backup configuration YML. Also lastly, the secret that we provided is also here. When I click deploy, these YMLs will be applied to your cluster and the MongoDB instance will be Okay, so you can see here the monthly demo RS, the MongoDB instance is here. It is now in provisioning state. Uh, the, our KeepDB community operator is uh, now working uh, for, uh, okay. It is also, so if we go to the ports, we can actually look at the operator logs for our KeepDB community operator. Here, community. So, this is the community port, keep TV community operator port. If I click on the logs, okay, this is the log for the operator. So, this is all coming through nets. Uh, this, this logs communication happening. Logs and exec control. Yeah. So let's do editor data store. Let's see what's happening. Let's minimize this for now. You have to change your name. Is this still in provisioning state? If we go side, go to the events. Yeah, you can see the events. Let's see if the ports are created. Not yet. Uh, I think there was some mistake in the YAML. That's why what's that not coming. Well, the stateful set is there. Uh, can you go to the stateful set event? Click on the stateful set. Go to the stateful set. Yes. Yeah, yes. Check the event. Exited quota. What whatever quota is uh, Go to the second error. The second error, second event message. Go to the message part. Hold on. Max moon sessions. What is that? Create pod is successful. I think there is a pod now. If you go back to the basic page, maybe there is a pod now. No, no, go to the basic here. Yeah, two of the ports are created. So this page will be auto updated every 20 seconds. Yeah, uh, you can see there are three ports here now. 
the node should be also linked, you know. Or I, I guess you know, like the, the name of the node, the node column. Uh, oh. That will be much. Is it? I mean, if we give any connection to the node, then then all the resource of the node will be connected through this node. So resource gap will be larger. No, no I'm saying uh, we want to go to the node page or the node list page. Uh -huh. I mean, clicking on node name will go to node details. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can. Uh, at least in the, yeah. I don't know, we could, we could go to those and see what's, yeah, see what that is. So database is ready. This is, I see the event ready. The status group not, is not updated yet. In the conditions, I see it is ready. I don't know, what's going on? Uh, okay, yeah. it's ready now. So uh, our database is uh, ready. Uh, now, uh, now let's show you how to perform a op request on our database. Now let's upgrade our database to 4.2. So let's go out to our operations tab. Let's create a MongoDB ops request. So this is our ops request create wizard. Uh, you can see that the namespace and the target database is already selected along with the op request name. Let's change the name. Select the op request type as upgrade. I'm going to select the target version which is 4.2.3. So if I click the preview, uh, you'll be shown the op request YML that will be applied. So if when I click deploy, the op request will be applied. You can see that the state of the op request is now in progressing state. Uh, if I go to the basics, uh, all our ports will be restarted one by one. Uh, yeah, the first monthly RS, monthly demo RS1 port is uh, restarted. You can see the age is 10 seconds. Next will be Yeah, the next one is monthly our demo is two. Still started. And final the monthly demo RS zero port will be restarted. Let's see. Uh, uh, you can see the database phase is critical and the version is uh, currently the previous one. Yeah, so the last port is being restarted now. Once this is ready, we will see that the changer here, the version will be updated. The phase will be ready.
Yeah, so all the ports are running. Uh, the database phase, uh, yes, this is ready and the version is 4.2.3. So basically that was the, that was our demo using the cluster UI. We have successfully created uh, a database, a MongoDB instance, and also performed op request on it.